Good morning, Alison Hall here. Welcome to Wednesday in the Word. I am a wife, I am a mother, I'm a Grammy, a sister, a friend. Many people I know have expectations with respect to what I should be doing and what plans I have. But what does God have in mind for me? He's blessed me with a loving family and confidence in him to know that God often makes it possible for me to join him where he is working. My health is reasonable for my age and my faith is strong. Strong enough to say to God each in, in prayer each day, Lord, show me where you are working and when and if you want me to join you. To be honest, though, like many retirees, like I am now, <laughs> some mornings I wake up feeling um, like I would really much rather stay in bed. Ephesians 2 verse 10 speaks out into my life loud and strong on those days. It says, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God has prepared in advance for us to do. If I decide to stay in bed, when God, then God will find someone else who is willing and able to do what he wants doing. But I know that I will feel terribly guilty. And I know from experience that I need to do what God is inviting me to do. I'm often surprised by Jesus's radical relationship with the women whose lives intersected with his during his 30 odd years that he walked this earth. He crossed man-made, social, political, racial, and gender boundaries and addressed women with a respect due to them. He broke the man-made rules to set women free. Every time Jesus encountered a woman, he broke one of the societal rules of his day. God created women in his image as he created man. Genesis 1, 27. But a lot has changed between the Garden of Eden and the Garden of Gethsemane. By the time Jesus made his first cry in Bethlehem, women lived in the shadows. Women weren't counted as people. They couldn't speak to men in public. They weren't allowed to worship with men. They couldn't sit under the teaching of a rabbi. They couldn't eat with men in social gathering or testify in court. Women were divorced for any or no reason at all, and they all had no legal rights. Jesus came and ch to change all of that. He didn't speak out about the injustice. He simply went about in his ministry, ignoring the man-made rules. He taught in places where women would be present, on a hillside, along the streets, in a marketplace, by a river, beside a well, and in the women's area of the temple. Jesus spoke to the Samaritan women at the well. It was the longest recorded conversation he had with one person. She was the first person who, who he told that he was the Messiah. I believe that he removed her guilt and her shame by the way he spoke to her, John 4, 1 to 30. Jesus welcomed Mary of Beth Bethany to sit at his feet to learn, Luke 10, 38 to 42. Jesus invited Mary Magdalene to join his ministry team, Luke 8, 1 to 3. Jesus encouraged the women healed from 12 years of bleeding to testify in the presence of all the people what God had done for her, Luke 4, 42 to 48. Jesus welcomed the sinful woman into a room full of men as she anointed his feet with perfume, Luke 7, 36 to 50. Jesus entrusted the most important message in all history to Mary Magdalene and told her to tell his apostles that he had risen from the dead, John 20, 11 to 18. Jesus was willing to risk his reputation to save theirs. He delivered women from diseases and set them free from spiritual darkness. He took the fearful and the forgotten and transformed them into faithful and forever remembered. I tell you the truth, he said, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, 
what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Matthew 26, 13. So here on this Wednesday, I want to encourage each one of you to never doubt what God can do with you, through you and for you. You were God's grand finale of all creation. Once he fashioned woman, he was done. Paul wrote, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3.28 You are never less than as a woman, and Jesus was willing to break the rules to prove it. Thanks for listening. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I am so grateful that you value us as women. Thank you for all Jesus did to show honour and respect to women during a very dark time in history. Help us to never doubt that you have fashioned each one of us with a purpose and a plan to be your image bearer. I ask that you spiritually touch every person listening to this video in such a way that they will be comfortable and in such a way that it will be clear to them that you love them and value them and want them to hear your voice and your plans and purposes for them. Thank you for the new women's ministry. May it glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye for now. See you next time.